Hi, this is Len, KD0RC. I'm going to show you my new method for calibrating my Regal DSA815 using an off-the-air WWV signal. In my case, I'm going to do it at 10 megahertz. Uh, depending on where you live, you may or may not get good reception at 10. You might want to try 2.5, 5, 10, 15, 20, and so forth till you find the one that has enough signal to noise to be able to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is do the preset so I don't have anything set behind the scenes that I don't expect. I'm going to go to System, Calibrate, do a Calibrate Now so I get the latest calibration on it. And when that's done, I'm going to make sure that self-cal is turned off. The reason for that is self-cal will every 10 minutes calibrate. And if you happen to be doing some video averaging, which we're going to be doing, this will stop, reset your average, and make you start over again. So it's very annoying. Uh, under normal circumstances, I do leave that on because it just takes a few seconds. But when I'm doing video averaging, especially over a long period of time, I want it off. All right, next thing I'm going to do is set my frequency to 10 megahertz, and that's the center frequency. I'm going to set my span to either 1K or 100 hertz, uh, depending on the uh, minimum resolution bandwidth that I can set. So I've done the hack on this one. I can get the 10 um, hertz resolution bandwidth on this, so I'm going to set it to uh, my span to 100 hertz. Then I'm going to set my reference level as you can, oh, I want to show you something that you can barely see in the, in the bottom. I'm going to go to amplitude and set my reference level so that you can see that there is actually a 10 megahertz spur on this. You can tell that I don't have anything plugged in here uh, and that's a spur. So it's just looking at its own 10 megahertz reference oscillator. I'm sure that's what's leaking through there. Um, so just wanted you to be aware that at 5 megahertz and at 10 megahertz you're going to see that. Um, I have not seen it at 20 and I have not seen it at, at 2.5. So um, if you're worried about that leakage, uh, you, you could use a different frequency. I don't think it matters. This is down uh, 95 dB or so, <clears throat> close to 100 dB down, uh, <clears throat> and so or minus dBm. If I plug in the antenna, you'll see that this signal is really closer to minus 70 dBm. Uh, it's fluctuating. That's the nature of getting this stuff off the air, but fairly good signal. All right, so I'm going to set my resolution bandwidth down to 10 hertz. I'm going to leave my video bandwidth at 10 hertz as well so that I don't have uh, the extra delay in there, uh, that, that's just not important for what we're doing here. And then I'm going to turn on video averaging. So I'm going to go to trace, trace type, video average, and I have this set to 100, just any random number is probably fine, and it's going to start uh, averaging these these readings so that um, I don't have the signal jumping all over the place. And it will do two things for me. One, the amplitude will settle down relatively. And two, the, the sides of the skirt of the signal will also settle down. Uh, any given uh, snapshot that you get during the one second span uh, can give you a really lopsided signal. And I want a very symmetrical signal because I'm going to use a trick to, to, to tell how far out of calibration I am by moving the reference up and down. So if I take the amplitude and move the reference signal, I can move it up and down and I can see using the crossing points of the graticule where I'm centered. Now I've intentionally offset this from factory calibration so that I'm a good I don't know, five or six, seven hertz off here. That's probably about centered. So about six hertz off of 10 megahertz, which is in the center. I did that just to show the, show the, the issue here better. 
you should know that the calibration factory calibration on this was within about two hertz when I got it and so this is really just an exercise to learn how to do this um, I'm not complaining about Regal uh, it was calibrated well when I got it I made it a little bit better but um, this will just show you how to do it alright so now let's figure out how to get the thing into maintenance mode there's a pattern of keys that you push that takes it into maintenance mode so it's trace, tracking generator, marker function, measure setup, system, print setup, storage. And you get a little message, welcome to maintenance mode. Now you can go to system, second page, and there's a new menu item on there called service. Click service, click calibration, and the one that we want for frequency is ref DAC. So the reference digital to analog um, controller is at currently at 1900. I moved it there intentionally to to move the signal off so that you can see that it is not at 10 megahertz. My original factory cal was at 1846 which put it about 2, two hertz off. I discovered that 100 counts of this ref DAC is uh, 8 hertz so that means it's 12, 12 and a half counts per hertz. So, and the higher the ref DAC value, the lower the frequency uh, of, your, of your displayed signal. Um, and so with 12 counts per hertz, that means you can set it to somewhere around uh, increments of one millihertz, 100 millihertz uh, increments to, to set it on frequency so that should be great I don't think the stability of this is is warrants that but it, it says that their their um, their DAC is set so that you have enough resolution to, to get this where you want so in my case I was at 1846 uh, on my DAC I needed to bring it down 2 Hertz which would be then 24 counts or bring it down from 1846 down to 1822. I know it says 1900 now, but that's just so I could show you this gross offset of five or six hertz. So let's set this thing to 1822. Enter. And now my technique here is to, uh, because we're on video averaging, I don't want to average this in, so I want to start the video averaging over. I can also do that by setting system, calibrate, calibrate now. This will reset the video averaging. And now we're back on average of one. Let's get a peek, and now we're, now we're quite a bit closer. All right, so now we're sitting at yeah, a couple hertz off, but by the time we hit the peak again after some averages, uh, now we're now we're getting within a hertz. So we'll let this average ten or so times, <clears throat> and now we're starting to get a very symmetrical wave. And my trick is to use this reference level on the amplitude button to move the signal up and down so that I split the difference. I get both of these lines to split the difference as to where they cross here. That means when they're both at the crossing point of these radical points, 10 hertz away from center, it means that... Oops, sorry, I moved that by mistake. There we go. Um, it moves that... means that my marker now is right, right at center. So now let's find out how we're doing with the counter. So I'm going to turn the counter on which is uh, marker function, frequency counter, I'm going to turn the state to on. Because of where I'm at with span and with resolution bandwidth it automatically selected one hertz. If it doesn't you want to set that yourself manually. And now I'm pretty confident that I have this exactly on because my crossing points of my graticule show me that that I'm exactly where I need to be. It's hard to tell exactly where the peak is, so I use these two crossing points to tell me I'm well within a hertz of being centered 
this is showing 10.000. Now this is not a counter. Here's the counter and this counter goes plus or minus uh, one count now. Uh, there it just snapped up to 10, it might go to 10.1, it might go back to 99, there's 999. So it's right now we're plus or minus one count, there's two counts. Um, all right, so in any event, we're well within spec of this machine, there's, there's the plus one now. <clears throat> so generally plus or minus one count, occasionally forays into two counts. Um, that is, to me, as good as I can get. So that's an off the air WWV signal that you're seeing filtered down really well with the internal filtering of this so that I get a single peak video averaging to smooth out all the vagaries of propagation and all that kind of junk that's coming in off the air and I think that's a good way to calibrate it. If anybody knows that this is not a good way for some reason uh, let me know but uh, that's, that's what I've come to, and as far as I can tell, I'm really as close as you could calibrate it. It's the, certainly, the calibration that came from the factory was more than good enough, but um, just to show you, if it does get out, that's how you do it. Also know that this is not a way to calibrate the amplitude. This is strictly a way to calibrate the frequency. Thanks. Talk to you all later.